Okay, so sitting in Sukhasana to start, um, you need a break at some point, definitely, everybody. Um, my knee's playing me up, so I have got a cushion this morning in case I need it when we're kneeling um, at points here. Um, so we're looking at our rhythms of life this week. Um, and, and the other day it was more about um, the circadian rhythm, the 24 hour clock thing. Um, but one of the other rhythms that came up when I was sort of looking at what to do was um, lunar rhythm, tidal rhythms are obviously linked with that, but lunar rhythm. So looking at our lunar rhythms this morning. So um, we'll take our lunar breath, our Chandra Bhadana. We did the Surya Bhadana the other day, which was the Sun piercing breath. Chandra means moon. So Chandra Bhadana is our moon piercing breath. So just come to the mat and find your breath. Watch how it is. A little bit ratty mine, just like me at the moment, I think. So just watch your breath for a second, be aware of it. And then just start to breathe in and out at your own uh, count of four-ish. Just start to control your breath, trying to even it out, to lengthen it out. Close in the eyes maybe just to connect a little bit more with it. And once you've got that rhythm going and you feel more attached to that rhythm, when you're ready, pop your... Um, Vishnu Mudra or your Nagara Mudra, as we found it was, up to your face. So your fingers on your head are folded in. Left nostril is your ring finger, right nostril is your thumb. Still just breathing here. So the, the uh, Chandra Vedana is the opposite of the one we did the other day. So it's in left, out right. In left, exhale right. So when you're ready, start that pattern of the breath. So in through your left nostril, closing off the right gently. Nice and smooth and slow, and then close off the left and exhale through your right. Close off the right, inhale through your left. Close off your left and exhale through the right. So that's the rhythm we're getting into. Take it at your own pace. Maybe you can start to work with it, visualizing a circle like the moon or even visualizing the super strawberry moon that's happening at the moment. So if you can see that in your head and inhaling up one side and exhaling down the other, visualize the circle as you continue with that Chandra Bidana breath. It's a uh, Moon piercing breath. So we're working with our Ida Nadi, our left Nadi, our um, left nostril. And we know that's the one that's linked to the moon. It's the cooler side, it's the calmer side, it's the female side. So very much working with the female side. Now, all these theories that came through these traditions, not just our yoga traditions, but also. The supermoon, for example, all the moon names come from the First Nations people in America. Um, and so a lot of ancient customs have linked the moon to the female side of things, to that calmer, cooler side we're supposed to be. I didn't quite start that way this morning, did I? But um, the female side, the Mother Earth side as well, is very linked to nature. So the rhythm of life. And of course, the female side of us, well, women are the ones linked to the natural processes of life through birth. Um, and so our whole uh, concept of the lunar side of things is very female. Um, interestingly, though, so just continue breathing. I'll just give you a little bit of the background here while we're doing this and you can see where I'm coming from hopefully. Uh, it's only a little bit this morning. Um, the lunar rhythm is obviously a 12 hour, 24 hour sort of cycle uh, and 28 or 29 and a half days actually the lunar cycle is, the lunar rhythm, which is quite interesting because it kind of links again to the female menstruation sort of periods, the time 
um, that that takes each month. Um, so again, there's a, a relationship to our rhythms, our physiology um, to the to the moon cycle. Um, there has been proven that there are effects on marine life and actually also on bird life, obviously. So um, marine life and insects, funnily enough, they have found there's a definite connection to the lunar rhythm. The marine life's probably not so um, unusual, but um, they haven't yet linked it scientifically to humans. But how many of us don't feel that pull of the moon? How many of us haven't realised that the reason we're not sleeping very well might be to do with the moon cycle? Um, and moods change. In fact, quite a few police forces realise that. And it is a known thing and has been for years that um, particularly violent crime um, is much more obvious during the full moon. So um, Sussex police, even at one point um, a few years ago, decided they were going to put more people on the street on full moon um, because of this problem that they had realised. But all over the world, police forces have realised that. So if they realise it, I don't know why medical science hasn't come up with the link. Um, but I think we all realise that, well, certainly I can feel there is a link to that monthly cycle. And it's not just a female monthly cycle, it's linked to the nature around us. Okay, so thinking of that, we're going to go towards a little bit of circles today, and then we're going to do a mini moon salutation and a big moon salutation. So when you're ready, it, let go of your breath. If you want to continue for a couple of breaths after I've stopped speaking, then please do. Just connecting a little bit more. And then once you've let go of your breath, open your eyes carefully. And keep them closed if you feel more comfortable. We're just doing a few easy movements sitting here in Supasana. If you need to recross legs, do it now and you can change at any point you need to. Hands on your um, thighs or knees just for a little bit of support here. We're starting just by tipping our chin downwards. So tucking the chin in and tipping it down so you get that nice extension through the back of the neck. Draw the tummy in a little bit as well. Feel that extension through the back of the spine in your body. And then just start to do little circles around your hips. So sitting on the floor, just rolling round. So it feels a little bit crunchy for me to start with, but then once you get into that rhythm, you can maybe then start to let it move through your spine. Try and keep your chin tucked and looking down if you can, so. So you're just rolling around the hips. But you might feel it starting to move up into your shoulders. And then come to a standstill. Come back to neutral, raise your head up. Hold yourself there and reach through your crown. And then if you can remember which way you went, do the circles in the other direction. It'll be the way that you don't feel you should go to start with. Little circles to start, and then let the movement work right up through you, up to the crown, as if you had a pencil in the top of your head here and you were drawing circles in the ceiling. Feel that moving through your side bodies, up through your shoulders. Let your shoulders draw the circles as well, if you can. Put as much movement into it as you feel comfortable doing and feel balanced doing. Watch so you're not leaning forward, so try and keep that long spine in this position. And then come to a standstill. Uncross, recross the legs, and we'll do that again on the other side. See if you can remember which way to go and do the opposite as we tuck our chin to start with, and then rolling in the opposite way. So it's probably anti-clockwise. Most of us would have, well, maybe not. I've actually realized that. Yeah, anti-clockwise. <laughs> Whichever way you're going, just feel that flow and that rhythm come into this movement. Keep the chin tucked, keep the tummy tucked. A little bit of a cracked back feeling here as you're doing this. But try and let the back move. Try and let there be rhythm flowing through you rather than it being just in your hips here. 
Come to a standstill again, find that length through the spine, reach up through the crown, imagine that pencil's in there, draw the tongue in to support your lower back, go in the other direction with circles. So if you can, you want to challenge yourself, pop your hands to heart centre and see if your hands were drawing you round or if you can actually do this without your hands on your knees. Different experience. You have to move the body slightly differently, engage the muscles a little bit more, maybe. And then come to a standstill and neutral. And we're just going to take some wavy side bends this morning. So just allowing the body to flow from one side to the other. You can do it on the breath if you want to, but don't reach too far. Make sure you've got enough extension to hold, but just gently moving and waving from side to side. All right, come to standstill. Uncross, recross if you need to. We will do it again in a minute. I'm going to take, use your left hand for your support to start with. Take your right hand and draw it round across the floor in front of you to fingertips to the floor. And then as if you're washing the windows, open the palm up, reach round a big circle. Take a couple of those, the moving round reaching as far as you can, but keeping a nice rhythm to it. Breathing in as you reach up, exhaling as you come back down. Closing your eyes, maybe visualizing that big super strawberry moon, which is named by the First Nations people um, because it's the time of the wild strawberries. I love the names they give to the moon. Okay, going the other way, with the, the same leg in front and across here, same thing, circle the other way. And then come to standstill, uncross, recross legs, do it the other direction. So left hand comes across and up first time. So the super moons and all the moons that are named by the First Nations people, as I say, they've got some lovely names. They've got wolf moons and pink moons and goodness knows what all moons, harvest moons, very much link that nation, those nations, um, change hands when you're ready, um, to, um, to that idea that the moon is very much part of our life, that the rhythms of the moon very much affect us, not just the sun, but the moon as well. So they're very descriptive about what's happening at that time of the year with the moon, the full moon. Come back to standstill, take the legs now um, in front of you, have a bit of a stretch out and a little wiggle, pop your hands behind you, just lean back a little bit. And then lift the right leg up and just circle your right ankle. So you're leaning back a little bit here. We're not in staff pose, we're more leaning backwards. And then circle it in the other direction. Ooh, it always feels good to circle joints that feel a bit stiff. And then pop that foot down, take your left foot up, do the same thing. And then pop the feet to the floor. Taking frog's legs now. So still leaning back a little bit, but make sure you feel nice and strong in the, in the body, in the torso, which your core on. And then bring your heels together. Bring them in towards your bottom. Feet together. Circle out. Come back round. Straight legs. Bringing them in towards your bottom. Knees bent. Circle out. Straight legs. Take a couple more. And then in the other direction. So straight legs, circle, come to the bottom of the heels, feet together, push them away from you.
some of these very simple movements are the ones that will um, rebound. You'll, you'll feel them later on in the day because it's movements that we don't not normally take through the day. Like so here with a hip joint and that one. So you might feel them later. Come back up and then bring yourself gently and carefully over to tabletop. Turn the other way. So oh, in tabletop, all we're going to do here is some hip circles. So find your tabletop position first of all. Don't just go straight into them. Feel that stability. Feel your core engaged with your tummy. Feel your length in the back of your spine. The length in the back of your neck. Tuck the chin. And then begin to move your hips round. So your hips are over your knees. So we're just doing some hip circles in one direction. Just little ones to start. You'll feel it going through your knees. My knees just crunch there. That's what made me realize that. So feel a little bit of the rotation through the movement, going through your knees. Be gentle with them and then go in the other direction. Keep that tummy engaged to support the lower back and stop things drooping. And then go in the first direction and see if you can go a little bit into bigger circles so that your shoulders become involved in this. And then the other way, bigger circles in the other direction with your hips. Gosh, my knees are crunchy. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't kneel this morning. That's loosening things up. Okay, come to a standstill, then just try to move through your shoulders in circles. So a circle at the top end of you in tabletop here. Feels a bit stickier. There's not so much movement and flexibility. Your hips are obviously still moving with you, but they're getting dragged along, it feels. It's a movements from hand to hand more here. And then go in the other direction. So your wrists are really taking the circle movement here. The, the, the um, weight of it, the gravity of it is going through your wrists into the floor. Come back to a standstill. Lifting a right knee, just a, a half an inch or an inch off the floor. So your hips are still pretty stable feeling and then just circle that knee above the floor. So your right knee is about an inch off the floor and you're just circling as if there was a pencil again on your kneecap just drawing little circles there and then in the other direction. So the, the weight's all been taken by the other three limbs, obviously. So push gently into them, lift yourself up, lift that tummy up, lift the head up. And then pop that knee down, moving into the left side. So move into your right leg and your hands as your stability now. Lift that leg and then just draw the circles. Noticing if you involve your tummy, how much easier it is. Both directions with that knee. Come back to neutral. Lifting our right leg out to the side now in a dog leg, leg lift. So take it out and up. And then just a few circles there in one direction and then in the other. So try and make them slow. Try and make them nice and fluid. So if you go too big, you might feel you don't continue the circle, it becomes an oval or something. So see if you can just try and keep that continual flow through the circle. And then go in the other direction. Again, imagining maybe a pencil on the end of your knee. Closing your eyes if you're comfortable doing that with the balance and attaching yourself to that shape that you're making. And then bring that leg down. Anybody needs a break in between, please take one. Otherwise, moving into the other side with a dog leg lift and then rotations. Keeping that tummy engaged, keeping that connection to the three points that are holding us up here. Leg gets quite heavy. And then bring the leg down. Sit back now into child pose slowly. And then bring the elbows to the floor. 
if you can bring a brick in here or bring your head to the floor. So a brick's quite nice to keep your bottom back. So bring your brick in here if you can. And then fold at the elbow, put your hands up above. So coming back behind your head kind of. But don't come into Anjali Mudra. Just circle your wrists there. So bring your elbows onto the floor, but your forearms are off the floor now. We're just making little circles with our wrists and fingers, releasing the um, pressure that's been put through them. Maybe flexing and pointing, holding the wrist as well. Any little crunching that you feel, as long as it's not painful, it's just releasing gases and things that are stuck in these joints. So this is one way of what I was speaking about earlier, that we release inflammation buildup in joints particularly by moving through them. Okay, so take a couple of breaths there then if you'd like to, just release a little bit into child's pose. Find that rhythm and pattern of your breath again. And then we're going to move up slowly to kneeling. So take your time, open your eyes, come up to kneeling. Use a cushion here if you need to. Um, I'm going to turn around again. <laughs> Like a dog this morning, I can't get comfy in the mat. Okay, so once everybody's up in a comfortable kneeling, we're going to take a mini moon salutation here. So you'll need your brick at one point here, have it handy. And then we'll try and take this on the breath if we can. So we'll take it in stages again, like we did the other day, then just build it up again. So kneeling, when you're ready, we're just going to inhale and come up onto our knees, hands to heart centre. Just take a couple of those, getting your thighs a little warmed up. So exhale down, inhale up. As you come up, squeeze your glutes, draw your tummy in. Reach up through your crown. And say put cushions under your knees here if you need any extra padding or fold your mark up is another way to pad them. So the next time we're coming up, we're going to stay up there. So everybody breathing in, coming up. Exhale there. As you inhale, take your right foot forward into a sort of very easy low lunge. Okay, so everybody should have this front foot under the knee and the back knee under the hip. So we're not taking a full low lunge in this, this, at this point. So from this point, find your breath again. Just take a couple of inhales, lifting the hands above the head, maybe extending the first time or two. So opening up the side bodies, then maybe going into your back bend, but feel that open side body feeling first of all. So really reach up, pushing gently through the knee and the feet that are on the floor. Your back foot should help you here too. So press into it. If you press into it, it'll also take a bit of the pressure off your knee that's on the back leg. So then maybe finding your back bend this time. So inhaling up, opening up the chest and the heart towards that top corner, keeping the tummy engaged though to try and support the lower back. If you're finding this too easy for you and your mind wants to do other things, close your eyes this morning and, then, and use your balance as well. Much more difficult with the eyes closed. So next time we inhale up, we're just going to open the arms out to the side at shoulder height. Exhale into there. Inhale there again. And as you exhale, just twisting towards the back leg. So open side. You've got your eyes closed. You'll find the balance comes into it again in this. Inhaling back to the middle, to the centre, keeping the arms out. So too heavy for you, put them at your waist and do the same thing. Exhaling, rotating, drawing that right shoulder back now. Inhaling, back to the front. 
Exhaling, hands come back to heart center. Open your eyes if they're closed. Draw that front knee back to kneeling again. Inhale there, exhale, sit down again onto your bottom. So let's take that sort of process on the left hand side. This is just the warm up part. So inhale, draw yourself up. Exhale, bring your left foot forward into the same position. Inhale, drawing yourself up and extending. Take two to three extensions on the inhale, exhaling back down. Then you can move into a couple of back bends. Find that extension through from your waist up and your waist down before you start to think about bending. Feel that length in your body. Grow. And then take your couple of back bends round about now. If you're in the same sort of breath as I am, you might be a bit slower. Do it in your own time. As you back bend, remember to press gently into your feet and your knee that's on the floor. Lifting out your pelvis. One more. As you come up this time, exhale and bring the arms down to your side. At shoulder height, sorry. Inhale there, exhale. Go to the open side. So you're moving your right shoulder back because your left foot's forward. Inhale back to neutral, the front. Exhale to the closed side, drawing the left shoulder back. Inhale back to the front. Exhale the arms back to Anjali Mudra. Inhale there as you exhale, take your left knee back. Inhale, less and tall from the knees up to the crown. Exhale, sit back down on the bottom. Take a couple of breaths there. So as I say, if anybody finds the arm movements here too strong, pop your hands to your waist. We're going to extend that with a few more movements now. Um, this is where we'll need the brick. So at one point we'll be coming up, I'll just demonstrate this um, here. One point will come up, we'll put the brick to what not quite as far back as your foot. Um, and then all we're doing is circling up and finding that brick. So. That's what the brick's for at this point, okay? And then we'll use it for something else in a second. Okay, let's get going with that again then. We'll just do one of each and then we'll move on to um, an option of tucking your toes for the next part or not, and just doing a few more different movements with it, arms. Okay, so inhale, back up to the top. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, arms come above the head in extension. Exhale, hands and Anjali Mudra come back down to your heart. Look, taking the back bend one now. Inhale, take your back bend, open up the front body, reach out of your pelvis. Exhale, hands come back down to heart center. Sorry, inhale, take the hands back above the head and then exhale and take them out to shoulder height at your sides. Inhale when you're ready, tall. Exhale, draw the back shoulder back and turn towards your open side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, closed side now, so my right shoulder going back. Inhale, back to center. Got what I'm doing now. Hands come back to Anjali Mudra. We're then, sorry, I've lost it here. We're doing arm circles now. So hand, let, right hand can go on your front leg. All we're doing is a nice big circle with the left arm forward. Turning towards it, putting a little twist in and rotating towards your back foot. So quite a big circle. Don't need to do it this big. Do it as much as is comfortable. Take three of them on the breath. So you're doing a full breath for each one. Probably inhaling up to the top and then exhaling as you rotate and draw back round. So after the third one, come back to Anjali Mudra. And then we're going to bring our brick in, whoops, inside the front foot. Not quite as flowy as I meant this. Hand onto the brick. The right hand on the brick. Push gently, your right thigh should be pushing gently inwards and your right arm should be pushing against it. So a bit of leverage there. 
This is a practice for triangle, just to help you know what we're aiming towards. So we're taking our Robin Hood arms in and we're just opening up into a sort of kneeling triangle position. So gently move that leg and arm in the front against each other. Use them to lift out of the, um, the top shoulder. And then big semicircle with that arm back down to the floor. Take that brick now and pop it beside the outside of your back leg. Hand on the front leg, so right hand on right thigh. And then big circle forwards with the hand, bring in that rotation that we just did and bring the hand down to the brick. So you might have to reposition your brick. If you can walk it a little bit further back and bring it towards your foot, this will make you feel that you're going into a kind of half camel. So then hand on that brick, rotate your chest and your head to look forward. So moving your ribs round so that you're feeling that you're ending up in a kind of half camel. The other arm can stay in the front leg if you want for balance, or you can take it up, whoops, and reach upwards with it. So a sort of moon salutation here we're doing. And then release the hand that's up. Carefully sweep that arm back round to the front, rotate yourself to the front, take that front knee back to kneeling, and settle back down to resting. So as I say, quite a lot of pressure on your knees here. Do pad them if you need to. The option also, I didn't give you it there, but the option is to come up on your toes. That will take the pressure off your knees for a lot more balance involved. Okay, we'll do it on the other side, kind of know where we're going now, hopefully. My, I might know where I'm going now, hopefully. Hands to heart centre when you're ready. Inhale, kneel up to kneeling. Exhale, left foot comes forward. Inhale, we're reaching up into an extension. Exhale, bringing the arms back down to heart centre. Inhale, ro rolling forward, saluting the moon. We're thinking up here, drawing your face up. Exhale, rolling back down to neutral, hands to heart centre. We're going to come up and then we're going to open the arms to shoulder height. So inhale, arms up above the head, really lifting. Exhale, open the arms out to shoulder height. Inhale there. Exhale, come to the open side. So take the left shoulder back. Inhale, back to centre. Exhale, rotate to the other side. Inhale, back to centre. Hands come down to the side. Take your brick, put it inside the front foot. Ready for when we'll do that. We'll first of all do the arm circles. So hand on the front knee or thigh. Just a little circle. So inhaling up as we open up. Exhaling, rotating, drawing the arm back. Big circles. Be careful of your back knee. Don't torque yourself and put all the strain on it. So make sure everything flows here. Get a rhythm involved. Keep that tummy involved. Come back round. Bring your left arm inside your left leg at the front here, ready for Robin Hood. Press gently thigh to arm, not elbow to knee, remember. Inhale when you're ready, taking Robin Hood, opening up. Let's take a couple of those big semicircle down. Take another one of those, inhaling, opening up into your modified triangle. Sweeping the arm down, back to the front. Move the brick then to the outside of the back leg. Front hand is your stability on your thigh if you need it. Inhaling, opening up. Exhaling, that circle continues round. And this time you drop the hand down and find your brick. Moving it backwards towards your foot, if you can and you're comfortable. Oops, <laughs> eyes open. Roll your heart and your ribs round to face the front again. And then if you want to, you can take the hand up, reach up. So, so saluting the moon again. 
And then carefully bring that thumb down to your thigh again. Use the front foot to pull you forward. Draw that hand back up off the brick and rotate it back to the front. Bring your hands to heart centre. Find your breath again. Inhale as you exhale, bring that front foot back. Sit back down to your knees. And then bring your big toes together, widen the knees out to the mat, width of the mat, sorry. Walk yourself slowly down then, come into wide leg child pose. Take a few breaths here. If your head doesn't quite reach the floor, remember to use your forearms or your brick. Keep your bottom back and down. Release off that lower back. Feel the knees are very open in this position, but they should be warmed up, so it should be quite a comfortable position for you to be in now, even with knees that aren't always um, accommodating. And find your breath again. Notice the rhythm of your breath. Maybe because I talk a lot, but an awful lot, um, that my breath often quite, um, uh, what's the word? Staccato. When um, I, I stop something like that, which shows that I've actually activated something. But it might also be because I'm talking and not breathing properly. But hopefully you feel a little bit of a rhythm movement in you now that your heart's beating a bit more. Okay, so then we're going to bring our knees back together, walk ourselves up. And we're going to roll up to standing for our tall moon salutation or standing moon salutation. So tuck your toes, walk them in towards the hands. Find yourself in a very soft row, uh, forward fold. Tuck the tummy. When you're ready, just gently trail the arms up to the top. Open the shoulders, take them onto the back of your body. Open the palms towards the front from Tadasana. Take another roll down, so gently rolling down. Use the hands on the legs to support you. That activate the back of our thighs a little bit more, so maybe you're able to straighten your legs a little bit more, not quite so bad this time. When you're ready, rolling back up. Eyes open or closed, whichever does make you feel better. Open the chest, lift the toes up. Take one more roll down and then either roll back up or if you feel comfortable doing it now, sweep back up, big circle movement with the arms, sweeping them out and up, looking up towards that top corner and a little mini back bend, hands come to heart centre and draw the heart back, uh, hands back down to heart centre. Stand into Dasana, lift those toes again, have a little wiggle of the toes, wiggle of the fingers. Find your breath. And then we'll go into our moon salutation. So as I said the other day on the email, the moon salutation, I always kept it for the evenings because of the moon sort of theme. But it actually, when you look at it, it's, it's quite powerful. It's got goddess. It's got triangle. It's got um, pyramid. It's got moving through malasana from one side to the other. So there's quite a lot of powerful movement in it. Um, for triangle, if you want to bring in your brick and have it ready for that, then you can use it. Because it's we move in this one from this position, from five star essentially, we then move into triangle. I'll just demo it. So the back foot stays forward. You might find it easier if your legs are a little bit wider than you feel they should be. And then we just gently fold down into triangle. Now, if that's funny, the front foot moves forward fold down into triangle that's what I'm saying you might want to bring your brick in for the first couple because it's a big pose it's a big thing on your thighs um if not you can soften your knee if you want and just to take the upper body triangle feeling so the whole point of this is to open the body so remember that option because it is a big move I feel straight into triangle and in, in this uh, salutation okay so we'll take it slowly the first time through um, we move from side to side on the mat in this one rather than starting at the front. So face the long end of your mat in the middle. 
And we're just inhaling, taking the arms above the head. Take a couple of those. As you do so, soften the legs. So often we would start this one in feet together rather than um, standing hip distance apart. A little bit more balance, but it's a more traditional way of doing it. So if you want to try that, bring your feet together and start that way. And then the next time you bring your arms above the head, we're going to take swaying palm tree. So hands stay above the head and we just gently sway to the right and sway to the left. Quite a heavy weight, so just be careful. Exhaling as we sway, inhaling as we draw back up. Use the feet to propel you back up. As I say, with your feet together, the balance is a bit more difficult. So after the next one to the left, we're coming into goddess. So hands above the head, step the, oops, sorry, wrong way. Step the right foot out first time. Turn the feet out, bring the arms down, push them away, and then fold them back into cactus arms. And then in this position, just remember the feet are turned out. So you want to feel the inner thighs working. So draw your bottom under, your tuck your uh, bottom and tuck your tummy in. But then lift out of your pelvis with the front of your chest. And then draw your shoulders back together, closer together in the back of your body. Open the palms of your hands. Pull the back of your palms backwards a little bit more towards the wall behind you. So they feel directly above your elbows. Tuck your chin, long back of neck, breathing. Okay, we won't hold it the next time so long, but that's the cues. Okay, into five star then. So reach up, move the feet forward. Draw the arms down to the sides. We're going into triangle. So I would suggest everybody just steps are slightly a little bit wider. Your left foot faces the long end side of the mat. Your right foot turns to face the short side. And then you just gently windmill over. So that's too strong for you. Pop the left hand on your waist, soften the front knee and move down. Bring your inner your hand inside your thigh and use that leverage that we had earlier with the brick or fold down to the brick if it's there and then open up the top if you're comfortable doing so. If you're not, just think of rolling that top shoulder open, drawing the bottom forward, and your head can look forwards, down is much more easeful, or upwards towards that top hand. From here, we then move into pyramid. So we gently drop that top hand in a big semicircle, as if you're coming back through Robin Hood. Rotate your body to face that front leg. Rotate the back foot then, turn it, you might have to move it a little bit, oops, closer and you're into pyramid. So there, you've got your both feet are facing the same way. One might be slightly angular at the back. You're on train tracks. Front leg is straight or can be softened if it's too strong for you. Hands can be at your waist here, or you can take them in front of you and reach out and lengthen through to your crown. Really press into the back foot. Feel the back foot connection. Draw the tummy up. Who thought moon stuff was quite so strong? Okay, so then from here, everybody take their arm, arms down just to dangle at the side. Soften that front knee, everybody, if you haven't already, and gently move down over it to reach down to the floor with your hands. And then the back foot, we're turning it to face the long end of the back again. We're walking our hands round and we're coming into half malasana. So you have to adjust that back foot to move out the way. I like to have it with a long end, end edge pushing downwards, so the foot facing forward. Some people point the foot there. But I find it's much more connected this way. And then we're walking the hands over. Central point would be malasana, but you're very wide there. So then we're not going into that today. We're coming back over to the other side. Long edge again, just the stability. Walking the hands round, the front foot then turns to face the short end of the mat. The back foot has to rotate for you. You might need to step it in then just a little bit to come up to pyramid again. So here, to come up to pyramid, hands can be at waist or on your thighs if you find it too strong. Or if you really want to go for it, you sweep your arms out in front of you 
and draw yourself up to pyramid. So really reaching through the crown, everybody eat with your hands, wherever they happen to be, it doesn't matter. The hands at the waist, you're really reaching through. And then we're coming into triangle from this. So hands can go to shins or thighs, your front hand, your left hand. And then we're just Robin Hooding open into a triangle. Bringing the hips forward, the tummy in, lifting that top shoulder and drawing it back a little bit. Hand can be at your waist, remember, or behind you is quite nice. And then we're bringing that hand down. We're coming from this into goddess. So you have to adjust that front leg a little bit, turn the other foot out the way, and then sink down into goddess. Back into goddess. So it's a lot of adjustment of feet through this salutation. It's one that you have to really practice moving through. And then coming up from here into five star, reaching out, turning the feet forward, stepping the right foot back in, whoops. <laughs> and then allowing the hands to come back down. Actually, I missed out. We should have done three in palm tree there, but that's okay. So, what's the time? Let's try that one more time going the other way. If you don't want to and you want to sit it out, then please do so. If you do want to and you want to take any modified versions, Hopefully you've caught and on to what they are now. And we won't hold in anything particularly. We'll try and move through it. Try to think of moving the feet. It's a bit like golden seed. We have to move our feet a lot in this one. So try to think of your foot position. So feet together to start with, just for a change. Inhale, arms above the head. Exhale, take them down. Take one more, then we'll take three and palm tree from here. So inhale the arms above the head. Exhale, sway to your left. Inhale back up to the top. Exhale, sway to the right. Inhale back up to the top. Stepping out. Oops, left foot. Come into goddess. Sink down. Find your goddess position. Think of all the cue points. Try and remember them yourself. And then pushing up through and into five star, finding a real length from the center point of view in all directions. Bring the arms down to the side. Turn that back foot forwards. Turn the other foot towards the short end. Oh, sorry, wrong one. We're going towards the left. So the left foot is pointing towards the short end of the mat and we're folding over into triangle. Softening knee, doing whichever modified version you need to to come into triangle and breathing. Thinking of your cues again here, think of the tailbone or the tail rather moving forward. Think of the shoulders stacking. And then from here we come into pyramid. So adjust the back foot, bring that top arm down, sorry. Adjust the back foot, bring your hands to heart center or to your waist. And from there, if you want to, Extend them out in front of you, really reaching through, folding over that left front hip flexor, really reaching. And then everybody gently softening that front knee and coming down with hands to the floor, ready to walk round into half malasana. So take that back foot out. It's facing the long end of the mat, long side of the mat now. You're walking through and adjusting the feet so that the left foot now faces the long end of the mat and the other one goes out the way slightly, the points out towards that corner. From here, walk your hands round that front foot. Bring the front foot now to face the short end of the mat. Rotate on the back foot, on the ball of the foot. Step in a little bit if you can, ready for pyramid again. So soft knee to start is more comfortable to come up. You're already folded forward. So try and lengthen the body, hands to heart center or waist, or straight out in front of you. Gently push through that front leg and come up to pyramid. So really reaching through 
from your tailbone to your crown. Bring the hands back to your sides. We're rotating again into triangle, much easier to go from pyramid to triangle than the other way, I find. So the back foot, we're turning to face forward, uh, to face the long end of the mat. Bringing your hand to your shin or your thigh or the brick. Robin hooding, open into triangle, draw the hips forward, really feel that switch you own. And then actually I came up the wrong way the last time. We come up from here into um, five stars. So soften that front knee and then push through, reaching up, coming up, adjusting the feet for five star, really reaching through in all directions. Turn the feet out, ready for goddess. Soften down into goddess. Think of that goddess, very linked with the moon, female, all that sort of stuff. Then push gently through the feet. Hands come down to your side. Turn the feet forward. Step your left foot in, back to feet together. Bring your hands above the head as you inhale. Sway and palm tree to the right. Sway and palm tree to the left. Back up to the top. Inhale tall, reach through to the fingertips from the heels. Exhale, allow the hands to come back down to your sides. And stand in Tadasana, feet together. So it's a slightly different Tadasana. It does have a different name if you look it up. Um, it gets all very confusing then, but basically a little bit more pencil like, a little bit more balance involved. If you can close your eyes here or half close them, find a drishti, you'll feel it's not quite so um, stable feeling as your feet get hip, hip distance apart. So take a few breaths here, get your breath back. As I say, that sun sal uh, moon salutation, to me, it's almost, well, almost stronger to me than a sun salutation. Um, but it's got very open body feeling. Everything like goddess is open, triangles very open. Um, Malasna, uh, gallon pose is very open as you walk across the floor. Um, so that is something to do with the female side of us. We are very open, sometimes too open. Um, but as I say, quite a strong uh, salutation in its own way. Okay, so let's take a couple of, um, let's have another look at triangle in a different way, coming into it in a different way. So bring your brick into the front of your mat and then standing into Dasna, step back with your, uh, I'm going to do yeah, right foot, so I'm facing the wrong way. Set your right back with your right foot, come onto the ball of your right foot. This is a moon pose we're going into here. This one is called Ashta Chandrasana. Chandra, again, remember, is moon, asana is pose. Ashta means crescent, so this is crescent moon pose. So we do this all the time. It's like a high lunge idea, but with the crescent shape of your bodies coming into it, with the um, back bend that we've come into. So here you can just take your hands to heart center if you want to, or you can sweep your arms up with me as you inhale and you open up your chest up towards that top corner. So really pushing out of that back foot, but allowing the front knee to soften forward. So we're sinking forward. So the knee's still over the ankle at the front, but you've got a feeling of your, um, body weight moving down towards the floor through the center of you. Lift up the heart, open up the heart towards that top corner. Draw your elbows a little bit closer to your ears if you can. But feel that nice crescent moon shape in your body here. So use that back foot to propel yourself into it. Breathing, of course. Then bring yourself back up extended, bring the hands back down to heart centre. Coming into triangle from this is much easier. So bring your brick in again if you need it, or use your leg if you're happy, or the floor if you're happy to put your hand to the floor. So from this position, bring your back foot in and rotate your back foot. So you feel that long edge helping you here. Knees still bent. All we're doing then is rotating our body to face as if we're doing warrior two. 
And then just folding, or find the length first, but folding your left side body and reaching down towards either your brick or your shin or your thigh. Little soft knee. And then gently open up that knee and then lift the top hand. Rotating as you do and opening up the body. Easier way to get into triangle. Bring that top hand down now. If you've got it near you, grab your brick. We're going to go into another moon pose. So choice here is a modification. This is half moon, which is a big pose. Your brick has to end up under your front shoulder. So it's not beside your foot. It's quite a little bit further forward. A bit like when we're going into um, warrior three. So think of that where your shoulder is going to be, the line of it. You can lift it as you do it. Soften your front knee and everybody can take that brick forward then. And then everybody can just take the foot off the floor. Doesn't need to be very high. It can still be on the floor if you want. And then just rotate that upper hip. See how far you can get opening up. And um, those of you that want to go into more of the pose, we're going to move forward into that front leg. We're going to lift that back heel up as if you're going into warrior one. So make sure you feel stable with a brick under your hand here. And then the Robin Hood is quite a good way of going into this. So you can Robin Hood because it helps you rotate your body. So be very careful and slow. Ooh. Rotating up, lifting out, drawing that heel back, flexing the back foot, lifting out of your front foot. Half moon pose come out of it, take the hand down, allow the back leg to come down, soften the front knee, come back down and come back up to standing. So don't need to do the full pose. Um, sometimes it's easier to take the active part of the pose than to do it in um, what seems the more easeful way. Sometimes you're having to put a lot more into it. So take your own modification. Let's try that quickly on the other side. So we're going to go into Ashta Chandrasana, this time with your left foot moving back into your high lunge. So remember to sink down, so you're not up here, you want that front knee to feel nice and soft. And then hands come gently in front of you, reaching out, reaching, 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 until you find them up above your head and then rolling the heart open into that lovely crescent shape. And take a few breaths here. But really think of moving more to see if you can find a little bit more of that shape in you. Whoops, sorry, I'm wobbly this morning. <laughs> and then hands come down through heart centre. We're going to adjust that back foot ready for triangle. So wherever you feel it sits right, soften the front knee. Either bring the brick in inside your foot or use your shin or your thigh. Gently moving forward, opening up that front leg and then taking a Robin Hood to open up the body. Think of moving the bottom forward, rolling that top hip so back here. So at your waist, you're rolling round and opening. Breathing. Take that back hand down then. Could, could have been at your waist, sorry, I didn't give you that much modification. Hopefully you realise that. Soften the front knee, turn round. Take your brick then, position it. If you're going to try half moon, um, Arda Chandrasana as opposed to Ashta. So half moon, you can either take the softer version, just playing around with that, but try not to think of it as warrior three. Try to roll open that top hip if you can. If you're going to go for the full one, lift the leg first of all, come into your kind of warrior three feeling. And your hips already probably started to roll. So then roll carefully. Make sure your shoulder feels connected to your hand and the brick properly. So for balance, move it around if you have to. Roll the body open. Use Robin Hood if you need to. Whoa, I'm really wobbly this morning. <laughs> Something's going on. There we are. Okay, open up. Half moon. 
rotate round slowly, come back to the front, move the brick away. Well, ha actually have the brick handy. Come down through Rad Doll now. So when you're ready, have a little shake through into Dasna, maybe. Get your breath back a little bit. And then when you're ready, find your exhale and let yourself go down very gently. Use your hands on your thighs to support you. Tuck the tummy, soften the knees, support the lower back a little bit more. Gently coming down through to Rad Doll. Taking a couple of breaths here if you want, otherwise open the eyes and bring yourself down carefully to kneeling. Taking a couple of cat cows or dynamic cat cows when you're ready in tabletop. Just thinking of rippling through, of making it rhythmic, of flowing. Tides and the moon are very, very much connected, obviously. I still don't understand how science hasn't connected us because we have mostly water and fluids. So obviously the pool of the moon protects the oceans. It comes down to the reason that we are connected as well. Anyway, I'm not a scientist. Maybe someday soon they'll realise. Another one of medical science having to catch up with ancient traditions. So the thing about yoga this morning and cancer sufferers and people that are recovering, you know, they've now found for definite, they're happy with the scientific proof that yoga does these people good. If only they'd listen to the ancient traditions a little bit more, they might find there's a lot more healing that can be used from, can be taken from them. Okay, hey, so once you've finished with your cat cows, carefully then sit back into child's pose if you feel that you need to for a couple of seconds. Have a few breaths, have a wriggle of your wrists. And then carefully bring yourself over and onto your back. Bring your knees in one at a time to your chest in Apanasana. Hands behind your thighs if you're comfortable. Just clasp your hands behind your knees there. And then have a little rock from side to side across the back of your body. If your hands are behind your knees, then you'll find you can soften your shoulders and let them get involved in the rhythm here a lot more. If you're holding onto your shins, then there's a lot more tension going through your upper body. So try and make this nice and softening and rhythmic as you roll from side to side. Come back to neutral, just slowly allowing it to come back to centre. And then popping your hands on your knees and just taking some hip circles. Whichever direction you started in, we're going to go in the other direction in a second anyway. Big circles through the hips, also getting the shoulders involved. The bigger the circles, excuse me, the more your shoulders get involved and enjoy that movement as well. Go in the other direction. Pop your feet to the floor one at a time, bring them out. Elongate, have a stretch if you feel you want to, and then walk into a last crescent moon shape. So walking your feet to the left or the right, shoulders to the left or the right, same side. Find that crescent shape again, the banana asana shape of you. Have a little stretch through the whichever side's the long side now. You don't need to make it really um, active. You don't need to cross feet, hold on and pull wrists. Just allow that opening in the side body to happen, to release a little bit to anything that it was holding. Find your breath and breathe into the side that's open. Let go of anything that's holding on still with your exhale. And then walk your feet over to centre and move your shoulders over to centre. Then then walk feet and then shoulders to the opposite side. 
watching if there's any slight difference between one side and the other. Maybe one feels a little bit tighter than the other. Maybe one shoulder feels tighter or your hip. Or just a general sense that it's done a lot more work. We have got stronger sides, remember, so it's good to know which one does tend to hold your tension. It does all the hard work, but it doesn't often release very easily. So use your exhale here to breathe into that side and release the space between your ribs. Release that space between your ribs and pelvis. Release the length of your legs. And then walk back to centre and come to Shavasana. So open out to the width of the mat with your feet. Let your feet fall out. Let find a very open pose again. One of the most open poses, one that a lot of people don't like for obvious reasons. But hopefully all of you enjoy this moment in Shavasana and can extend it at any point. Please all, always do if you can. So find your breath again, just find your inhale, exhale, use your count of four, take control of the breath, one or two breaths here, really moving the breath through you. We finish here's a little, a little mm, mini story, or a little thought to finish. People complain when there is too much sun and it gets unbearably hot. Or they complain when it rains too much or when it's bitterly cold. But no one grumbles when the moon shines. Everyone becomes happy and appreciates the moon in their own way. Children make shadow puppets and play in the light. Lovers hold hands and walk in its glow. People gather in village squares to tell stories and dance through the night. A lot of happy things happen when the moon shines. So if you're still taking control of your breath, then take a couple of sighs on the last couple of breaths here. And then let go of control. Let the breath become its own pattern again. Let it take, make its own rhythm for you. For the rest of the day, you probably won't have to think too much about your breath. But that rhythm will still be flowing through you. Take your time, move up slowly, have a stretch or a movement if you need to before you move up. Stay in Shavasana if you have that luxury, please do. Otherwise, come to close of class in Sukhasana again. Bring our hands to heart center. Feeling all the natural rhythms of our life. The pools, the things that push you along. Going with the rhythm is the thing to do. Pushing against it won't help things. So stick with the rhythms of life and enjoy them. Thank you everybody for your practice this week. See you next week back in England. Uh, namaste.